I really love my Omega 65, but what if we could take this on the go into a form factor kind of like this? Now, I do know for a fact that there is a handheld version of the Omega 65 that is in really early development, but what if you could take this, put this in here, and have a handheld Omega 65 to take with you anywhere you went? Well, with the Clockwork U console, we can now do that. And as you can see right here, I have it in full screen, ready to go. Just go ahead and see what we can get loaded. And as you can see with the Mega 65 emulator running on the Clockwork U console, you have a on the go Mega 65. So through this video, I'll go through step by step on how I installed the Mega 65 emulator on the Clockwork U console. But hang around afterwards because I have some additional thoughts and I'm also gonna share with you a way that you can easily install the Mega 65 emulator into the Raspberry Pi's menu. Okay, the first thing we are going to do is we're going to visit the XEMU collection of emulators. Scroll down and you'll see that there is a Debian package here. However, and unfortunately we can't use this. We are going to have to build the XEMU emulator from scratch in Linux on the Raspberry Pi, which is not difficult, but if you don't know the steps, it may seem a little daunting. We're gonna make that easy for you today. So the first thing you're gonna do is visit the project page. While that's loading, remember all the links will be in the video description below to get you started. And then what we're gonna do is scroll down, we're gonna get some instructions. You don't, you don't need any of this stuff up here. Just scroll down and you'll find out more about XEMU. Now it's important to note that XEMU includes other emulators besides the Mega 65 emulator. So don't worry about those. We will learn how to compile just the Mega 65. I will give you a tip along the way where if you do want the Commodore 65, the Commodore LCD, the Enterprise 128, the Primo, the Videotron TV, I will show you how you can build those in one command. But again, you may not want those. As you scroll down, you also see that there's some interesting features, Commander X16, Commodore VIC-20, and Commodore Geos. A lot of these are kind of unfinished or experiments, so don't expect them to work. And as a matter of fact, he even goes on to say, the Commodore 900, ZX Spectrum, RC2014, and CPM probably aren't going to work. So again, a lot of these emulators are all in a single package. I think one of the things I'd like to see in the future is the Mega 65 emulator pulled out and become its own repository, but not sure that's gonna happen and it's not my call to make. So as we scroll down, you'll see we have supported OS's and you just keep going down here a little bit and you see that we have the quickest start here. Uh, we have the quick start using pre-built binaries, which unfortunately we can't use, but if you are running Windows, uh, certain versions of Linux, Mac OS, you can download pre-built binaries, but we're gonna to have to start from scratch or from source. The first thing we need to do is we need to ensure our version of Raspbian OS includes the necessary files to build the software. So here's what we're going to do. Now I have VNC'd into the Raspberry Pi. I could load up my terminal here and you'll see I've got this really cool retro terminal and I could start typing away, but let's face it, typing on the U console keyboard for this particular task might not be as comfortable as you would hope. So what I'm going to do instead is, I'm going to pop into my Mac terminal and I am going to use an SSH command to log in remotely to my U console. I've changed the name from Raspberry Pi, which was the default to U console because I have lots of Raspberry Pis on my network. And so I'm gonna SSH my account at uconsole.local. And it'll ask for my password. Press enter and you'll see I'm in. Now the first time you do this, it may ask you to verify and authenticate. Now once I'm in here, you'll see that I can do a ls and you'll see that I have my home directory. And so I wanna make sure I'm working in my home directory. So don't forget this little command here. And I can verify that again with an ls. So now we'll go back here and you'll see that we have sudo apt update. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see if we have any changes or updates that need to be made. Looks like I'm all up to date, which is perfect. And then what we're going to do is make sure and load these build files. Now, you could go back here and type this, but the easiest way to do this is just simply highlight it, copy it, come over here and paste it. And what you're gonna find is, in my case, 
everything's already installed. In your case, the line will make sure to install everything you need to build the Mega 65 emulator. All right, let's go back over here. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is we need to grab the files from Git. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit further here. Now this is what I would really like. He talks about creating a bare metal version of the XMU emulator to run on Raspberry Pi. Man, I wish we could get that. All right, we do need to clone the Git repository. So I'm just gonna copy this. Again, you could type it or copy it. We'll go back over to my SSH instance. I'll paste that. And what that's doing is going to GitHub and pulling or cloning that repository to your local Raspberry Pi U console. All right, and you can see it has copied that repository. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do a list, but you know what, let's, let's have some fun. Let me go back over here. I want you to see this terminal. It's really cool, I love how it works. Let me go ahead and click in here. And you see it looks like an old retro terminal. But one of the things you'll notice in here is that I now have a directory called XEMU. I can change directory. I can list that. And you'll see we have our repository downloaded to the U console. All right, while that's a lot of fun, I do wanna go back here. I wanna make sure and get everything correct. So let's go back to our instructions. And now you'll see right now, we've already done this. Uh, let's go ahead and do that in our SSH instance because you have to remember that those are two separate instances of the terminal. They are not connected. So now you'll see that we are in XEMU. Now, if you wanted to build every single emulator that is included with XEMU, we could come in here and type make and expect to wait a very long time depending on the speed of the device. And in our case, the Raspberry Pi 4 compute module, while fast, is not the fastest. So we are only going to compile the Mega 65 emulator. Well, how do you do that? Go back here, you'll find that there are some instructions right here to compile only or make in the top level directory, will compile all of them, which we talked about, a given emulator, let's say, make, so he's got a specific Mega 65 example in here. So we're just gonna follow along. So thanks for including exactly what we need. So we will go to CD targets. He suggests an LS dash L. And there you can see a list of all of the emulators. Now we want Mega 65, so we are going to dive into there. And then if you come back, you can see what we need to do now is just simply make. So we will go ahead and make or build the Mega 65 emulator. You're gonna get a lot of warnings and errors along the way, but you don't need to worry about it. The only thing you need to worry about is if the whole build process bombs with some errors. All right, it took the compute module about two minutes to build the emulator. All right, now we wanna run the binary. All the binaries are found in this folder right here after they're built. Now, it says we could go ahead and run it just by typing that, but let's go ahead and take a look and make sure everything's there. Go back to our home directory. Let's go ahead and list that. Let's go to xemu slash build slash bin. Let's go ahead and list. Let's see what we have in here. And you'll see we have our Mega 65 or X Mega 65 emulator ready to go. So we can go back to our home directory and hit that. Now, I am not going to be able to run that emulator from here. We will need to run that from the Raspberry Pi. So let me go back over here. Let's see if we can run the software for the first time. Okay, now this is standard. Don't worry about these errors. We need to move through a couple of XEMU dialog boxes. Just go ahead and say, okay. Say, okay again. And it's gonna say, hey, we don't have an SD card. Yeah, we know that. And you'll see that it created an SD card image for the Mega 65 emulator to use. All right, cannot find its signature. Don't worry about that. Just click okay, just keep going. Now it's gonna load up here and you're gonna see it says, welcome to the XEU emulation of Mega 65, press return to accept the FPGA reconfiguration request. So go ahead and hit return, again, following instructions. It's gonna say, oh, here's another error. Yes, we want to do this now. Now this is perfect. This is where you want to be. Basically what's happening here is, it's telling you that the Mega 65 emulator does not have the ROM. 
And that's no problem because I have downloaded the latest stable ROM right here from the file host. And that's available at files.mega65.org. Go to files, search for ROM. And if you have not purchased a Mega 65, there is a way for you to obtain the C65 ROM by purchasing the C64 Forever package from Cloanto. Then, using these diff files, you can patch that original C65 ROM with the Mega 65 ROM differences. Now, I am an owner of both the dev kit and a Mega 65, so I'm gonna go down and find the stable ROM, and you'll see that right here. So I just simply clicked on that, and downloaded that file and then moved it over to my U console using SFTP. So now what we need to do is update the SD card image that it built earlier with the stable ROM. That's pretty easy, just right click, choose disks, SD card, and we want to update files on the SD card image. And then what I'm going to do is go to my desktop. You also notice I've downloaded some fun files for us to try later to see if everything's working, we'll go ahead and load this bin file right here. We'll open that and you'll see the system files on your SD card image seems to be updated. And now the Mega 65 emulator is running on the U console. And there you have it. Okay, now let's try a disk image and see if it's working. I'm going to go ahead and minimize my terminal. I cannot close my terminal because it's running in the background. We'll talk about how to create a desktop application icon here in just a minute. Let's see if we can get the mega juggler working. So what I'm going to do is simply drag and drop that onto the emulator. It'll say, what do you want to do? I want to mount that as a .d81. Alternatively, I can right click disks, drive eight, and I can attach. So let's go ahead and pull up a directory and see if we've attached that disk. You can see that there. I'm gonna scroll up here, and then I'm going to use my up arrow to automatically load that software. And there you go. The X Mega 65 emulator is working on the U console. That is very nice. Now there are some quirks to this. One of the things I need to do is work with the keyboard configuration file so that I can remap some of these keys for the emulator. There are some things, some things work really well. There are some things like the cursor keys and the control pad buttons I would like to map to a joystick. I can do that in that config file. I would like for the Mega 65 emulator to run in full screen when I start it from the Raspberry Pi menu. Currently it starts in windowed mode. There's also some visual settings I would like to change so that those start up automatically. Currently, I have to change those upon every boot up. But all that can be done in a configuration file, which again makes this infinitely hackable. I'd really like to set this up in a way that it just loads exactly the same every time I load it. and makes this a seamless experience where this just feels like a Mega 65 handheld. Now, unfortunately, one of the things that happens when we use this method to install the emulator is we do not get a menu item up here for the emulator. But never fear, I've made that easy for you. If you go to buymeacoffee.com slash retrocombs and select the extras for $1, you can download my custom script and resource files that will automatically create that menu item for you. Now you can go out and search for this on your own and do it, and I could have included it in the video. It's pretty mundane stuff. You're just copying a bunch of files to certain directories, but the script will do everything for you. Currently in the script, you have to rename those files and then run the script for it to place the correct icon in the menu. However, in a future version, which uh, would be like version 1.1, I hope to include a menu so that you can select which icon you want. Now, the great thing about it is once you support it at version 1.0, if I go to version 1.1 and add that, and I say if, uh, if there's a need for it, then you'll get the updates for free. It's just, just use the same link again and you can download it. So that's just a little feature and a way that I can encourage you to support the channel and get you engaged. Because the other thing that that will get you for just $1, once, $1 only ever, you also get access to my monthly newsletter that includes a lot of stuff about what's going on on the channel, but also 
a new section we've just created in there called Last Bytes, which are some deep links to some retro computing items found online that you might find of interest. So what do you think about this serving as the Mega 65 handheld until we get the official version? Should we abandon the official version and use this as our default hardware platform? Probably not before everybody goes out there and starts dropping all those comments, which you should, you should drop some of those comments, but it is an interesting what if scenario, right? But for now, this is probably the best and closest thing we have to a handheld Mega 65 that you can put together today. Well, not today. There is still a little bit of a wait on these. I'm not sure what the backlog is on that, but when these are readily available. And also, since this is, uses the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, and we know the Raspberry Pi was just released, imagine this getting upgraded to the Compute Module 5. So it's a pretty slick package. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Retro Combs. Hey, uh, get your handheld Mega 65 gaming on the go. Get it going on. Let me know what you think. Retro Combs out. This is so cool.